Today we're going to discuss a somewhat unexpected discovery in regards to supermassive black holes. A discovery that basically proves how they seem to grow. And in this case we don't just have a theoretical explanation, we finally have physical proof. A proof coming from the James Webb Space Telescope that essentially shows us how some black holes are able to achieve incredible masses in what seems to be an extremely short time. And so, hello in full person, this is Anton. Let's discuss this recent study by Hewon Sa and her team that was able to discover an unusual black hole relatively far away from us that to everyone's surprise seems to be consuming an enormous amount of mass, way way more than we ever thought possible. As a matter of fact, 40 times more than theoretically predicted should be possible for a typical black hole. But first, why exactly is this unusual and what exactly is the mystery or the question scientists are trying to answer? Well, first of all here, we're only talking about supermassive black holes, the black holes in centers of various galaxies that sometimes produce enormous emissions. And because of new telescopes, including the James Webb, in just the last couple of years, so many discoveries have been made about extremely distant black holes. For example, very recently, researchers accidentally discovered a black hole that is actually slowly awakening, becoming an active quasar. This was actually discovered completely by accident and we've never really seen this happening before. But this is obviously something that was always predicted. We know that black holes go through various active stages and sometimes reawaken when, for example, they suddenly get a huge amount of mass they can absorb, producing enormous amounts of energy and becoming more massive in the process. But what's a little bit more unusual is the fact that in the last year or so, there's also been a lot of evidence for a lot more supermassive black holes than we actually expected in many of these distant regions. For example, we've discussed some of the previous discoveries in regards to so-called little red dots that seem to represent distant bright galaxies, mostly containing massive black holes and a lot of dust. And so in most cases, the observations here suggest a much higher number of very massive black holes than the scientists originally anticipated or predicted. Which basically raises the question, how exactly are they forming, where are they coming from, and more importantly, what's the main process that causes them to become so massive? So in essence here, it's just a little bit difficult to understand how they're able to grow so rapidly so early on. But there's always been two main explanations. Either these black holes were already massive when the universe just began right after the Big Bang and were thus created as supermassive black holes right in the beginning, this is basically the idea known as the direct collapse model, or they were born from much smaller objects, possibly even as a result of really massive supernova, and eventually grew super super fast to their current sizes. But the thing is, there was really no evidence for either one of these explanations. The only evidence researchers had was the observations that supermassive black holes already existed just a few hundred million years after the beginning of the universe. And based on current estimates, or specifically estimates of their growth, it would be practically impossible for them to acquire these enormous masses. And that's because of one intriguing principle. It's usually referred to as the Eddington limit. And it basically refers to the luminosity of a typical body, or essentially the brightness of, for example, a star. This concept was originally proposed by the famous Sir Arthur Eddington, the English astronomer who basically predicted nuclear fusion before we even discovered it. But more famously, he was the one who took the picture that eventually proved Einstein correct. So I guess in some sense, he kind of made Einstein who he was. If it wasn't for Eddington's experiment, Einstein would most likely never become famous. But one of his groundbreaking propositions was in regards to the limit of brightness. And this is in essence because we know that photons basically produce just a little bit of momentum. In other words, even though they have no mass, because they contain energy, they can also push on things just a little bit. That's of course why we have things like, for example, solar sails, which work in outer space. And so back in the days, Eddington proposed that, well, there's probably a brightness limit because at some point, something can become so bright and produce so many photons that they're actually going to be producing so much push away from an object like a star that it's actually going to start losing mass and the push from the photons is going to be higher than the star's gravity. And well, he was definitely right. Because we've discovered so many stars out there that are practically at their Eddington limit. The most common example here is a typical Wolf-Rayet star. An extremely bright and an extremely hot star 
whose ridiculous brightness produces enormous solar winds, resulting in these stars losing huge amounts of mass really fast. Although in this case this is usually referred to as the Eddington factor, and that's because they're not really at that limit yet. Because if they were at that limit, they would just completely fall apart, turning into some kind of a nebula. But that's stars. With time we discovered black holes. And turns out that this is even more important for black holes, because despite the name, they're not really black. They do have accretion disks that produce enormous amount of brightness, and the accretion disks here seem to have a direct control over how fast these black holes are going to be growing. And specifically, if you have an extremely bright accretion disk that produces an enormous amount of light, all of this is going to be pushing away all of the mass away from the black hole, thus to some extent preventing it from growing. Whereas with a much smaller disk, more mass can fall into the black hole, this of course causes the accretion disk to grow in size and to eventually produce more brightness and thus a higher Eddington factor. And so at some point, most black holes can actually assume a kind of a balance, which is what we would call an Eddington limit. Here, in theory, there's going to be a limit between the momentum pushing the mass away coming from all of the photons in the accretion disk and the gravity from the black hole itself that tries to pull everything in. And so here we would call this an Eddington limit black hole. Alright, cool, cool, cool. Well, following this super long explanation, what are we actually talking about today? Well, today we're talking about this. LID 568, recently discovered by an international team by using Chandra X-ray telescope combined with the James Webb. And this is an example of a Super Eddington Limit Black Hole, or a Super Eddington Accreting Black Hole 1.5 billion years right after the Big Bang. That's actually the name of the paper. In other words, this black hole seems to be producing a lot more light than theoretically possible. It's brighter than it should be, or it produces way more photons than it should be producing, because we expect these photons to push all of the mass away from the black hole, thus preventing most of the accretion. Yet here, we observe something entirely different. This seems to be an extremely rare example that was discovered inside an early universe dwarf galaxy, where the material is absorbed at an extreme rate, 4000% of the expected value, or essentially 40 times the Eddington limit. And that's of course the shock. Nobody has ever seen anything like this ever before. In essence, this means that this black hole is feeding on the matter 40 times faster than should be possible, which means that it's growing 40 times faster than predicted as well. And that's of course both good news and bad news for astronomers. Obviously, the good news here is that this finally provides us with actual physical evidence that black holes seem to be able to grow super super fast, much much faster than we thought possible, in the beginning of the universe. Which means that when it comes to supermassive black holes really early on, we don't really need to have any more additional explanations or any more exotic theories, because this observation explains everything all at once. Black holes, unlike predicted, seem to be able to acquire huge amounts of mass really fast. In this case we have observations coming from the black hole suggesting winds of 600 km per second, which implies very powerful nuclear-driven outflow, and the black hole itself is already more massive than Sagittarius A star, approximately 7.2 million solar masses. But there is of course that problem. The problem is explaining how it's able to do this. Because this was such a unique observation, researchers wanted to confirm that the observations from the Chandra telescope were actually showing us the reality by confirming this with infrared observations from the JWST. And the results do seem to actually match. Which meant that the researchers here were left with a bit of a mystery. The mystery being that somehow this black hole had at least one episode of extremely fast growth that dramatically increased its mass, producing all of this extra luminosity. And more importantly, this potential is very common, and most black holes are very likely able to do this, independent of how they were born. But this study does not provide us with a more exact explanation. However, another study from last year possibly does. And this is actually a completely independent study based on computer simulations that essentially try to figure out how certain black holes are able to grow through these unusual bursty processes. And so let's briefly discuss this other study that potentially provides maybe one explanation and actually a really good explanation. Here this is based on supercomputer simulations that show us what happens near the accretion disk and especially as you get closer and closer to the central black hole. This is a study by Nicholas Kaz and his team. 
And so in this study, scientists decided to focus on ignoring the classical theory describing black hole accretion disks and instead focused on relativistic frame dragging effects which become even more prominent as you get closer and closer to the central black hole because it basically starts to warp space-time around itself. And turns out that this relativistic frame dragging can potentially affect disks quite dramatically. They basically start to wobble and spin with the inner regions even breaking apart, forming additional features and additional structures. And more importantly, sometimes they seem to break into pieces or even form two accretion disks something researchers refer to as streamers, that basically destabilize the entire system, but also dramatically increase the accretion into the black hole, causing the black hole to basically swallow the entire disk in a very short period of time, usually just a few months. And so here the simulations show that this unusual cycle seems to happen quite a lot and causes the black holes to dramatically increase their feeding mechanism, making them consume way more mass all at once, dramatically increasing their mass but also naturally increasing the overall brightness. And that's because a tremendous amount of energy is released in the process. And though in this study they basically focused on explaining certain really bright quasars and why we actually observe so many unusual features coming from them, in some sense this also explains the unusual super Addington black holes and how some black holes can grow really fast in mere months. And so here it's the result of the accretion disk breaking into pieces and producing subdisks because of relativistic effects and frame dragging close to the black hole, which then in essence explains these powerful outflows and all of the excess energy we're observing. But that's of course just one potential explanation. We don't really know what's going on around this black hole, we just know that something is definitely going on and it's growing really really fast, 40 times faster than anyone thought was possible. But obviously because this is such an incredible discovery, We'll be coming back and talking more about this once there are some more clues or someone else provides additional explanations or even discovers something else incredible about this peculiar black hole. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.